Hello, my name is Anthony Jones. I am a concept artist for the film and game industry. I've been doing this since 2007. I worked for some companies like Blizzard, uh, Sony Santa Monica, uh, Riot Games, and I worked on films like X-Men, the Warcraft film, and even the latest Sonic movie. Today, I'm gonna be showing you guys kind of what I would do uh, in a professional setting. And one of my goals with this talk is to also help people understand that talent is something that you can earn, something that you can build towards. And so whenever people hear the word talent, what ends up happening is that they think that it's something that's just given to them. Like it's, hey, you know, I can't do art because, you know, uh, I don't have any creative bone in my body. Or, you know, I was never good at art, I can only draw stick figures. And I like to try to dispel this myth because I actually believe that most people are actually creative by nature, that are actually artists by nature. And what makes me believe this is that when you look at kids at a young age, you actually see that most kids draw at the same level and they're all usually pretty much doing creative things like singing, dancing, art. You know, in fact, that's what you usually do in the beginning stages of a, a kid's growth is teach them art. It's only until later, I think, that it's actually, you know, beaten out of us to not <laughs> think of art as a real path or a real career. And what I would like to do well, while you guys are watching is try to start to give you my philosophy on how to break this mentality and maybe potentially, uh, you know, open up your own abilities to become an amazing creative and really find the career path that really suits your, you know, interests and, and hopefully inspire you and motivate you to understand that this is totally something that everybody and all people can do. It's not really uh, as hard as you think. It just takes a lot of effort and a lot of patience. Before I get started, though, I wanted to show you my portfolio. I think it's really important to show you the kind of caliber of work that I actually do. So you know that I am someone who can draw pretty well and has a lot of skill in this specific thing. And a lot of what I do is digital painting and the tool of choice is Photoshop. I love Photoshop. I've been using Photoshop since the very beginning of my career. Uh, there was a time where Photoshop was something that you would actually have to buy outright. Like it was like about $800,000 software. And I used to say I would own about, like I knew about $700 worth of Photoshop. And I think that that's really important note because I really took the tool to its limits to be able to create the artwork you see here. And you're gonna see it, you're gonna see me do it. Um, and before we even get started there, I wanted to share you uh, an image here of something that I did in 2007, which is clearly god awful. And you know, it's one of the, one of the most proudest artworks that I thought I had in 2007. So proud I framed it, as you can see. And I repainted that in 2017. And I wanted to show this on the front end of this to kind of talk about, I, I genuinely earned my skills. I clearly drew like a child, and then I now move at a professional level. So let's get into it. I have Photoshop open right now, um, but I want to kind of preface this demo because I don't have too much time, but you will see even with my limited time, I'm able to kind of execute pretty pretty quickly, uh, that this was many years of practice and training. And as I'm painting, I'm going to kind of talk, talk to you guys about what that means and what that looks like, okay? So when I first actually began to, you know, become an artist, uh, I actually went to school as a programmer. And I tell people this because a lot of times, you know, when we see amazing artists, we think, oh, well, you know, this artist is clearly talented, right? They were born with a skill that none of us have access to. But just like in the beginning of this uh, talk, I mentioned that, no, I think most people, if not all people, have this ability. They have just, you know, for whatever reason, either grown out of it or were told that it's not a real career path, uh, that it's something that you shouldn't even entertain, you know, that really the only jobs that exist is either an engineer, doctor, or lawyer, right? And as many of you guys know, because you guys are watching this, uh, are creatives, right? And you guys know better. But I, I still find that people that are creative still kind of have doubts 
and have a lot of you know frustration with their own ability. They they feel like there's something personally wrong with them. They, maybe they're not talented enough that they'll never achieve their goals uh, as much as they would would like to. And all, if only if they had that extra talent, would they be able to get as good as they need to? Uh, one of the reasons why I think it's not a good strategy is because for one, if you really think about you know what it is to get good at art, it is all it takes is just a ton of practice and a ton of um, diligence. And what ends up happening is that people rely on motivation. You know, I don't feel motivated enough. I don't feel motivated to draw today. I don't feel inspired to draw today. I don't like nothing is nothing is coming to me. And what ultimately ends up happening is that they do nothing, right? They feel really frustrated. They kind of quit. They put their pencils down and then they just move on. Uh, but if you really were to ask a simple question, like if I were to ask you this question, hey, you know, um, what do you think it takes to get good at art? Do you believe that you have to draw a lot? And most artists would be like, yeah, of course. Of course I would have to draw a lot. So then I say, then why did you stop drawing? Just because you didn't like how you felt, right? Because you didn't feel motivated. When you actually fundamentally know that you should be drawing, regardless of how you feel. And in fact, you should stop thinking of it as, hey, I, I don't feel motivated. You should think of it as, no, I have to be uh, patient and I have to be resilient. The patience is that I know that the more I draw, the better I will get. So that means it will take time. The resilience is I don't feel like drawing today. I feel like a real you know, crappy person today. I don't think uh, you know, I have it in me. But you know what? I heard this talk by Anthony Jones, and he was saying, you know, just draw anyway. And my advice to you is just spend like 30 minutes and don't worry about the quality. Focus on the time. I'm putting 30 minutes in, and after the 30 minutes, I'm done for the day. That's right. For the whole day, you don't have to draw anymore. Because what I'm trying to teach you guys and explain to you is that you're really trying to build a habit of like, I'm drawing or I'm doing art, or I'm doing something creative, not for the sake of having quality at this moment, but to have quality in the future. And when you start to think this way, uh, you will see improvement uh, drastically. A good way of thinking about this, too, is if you were to go to the gym, and I said, hey, you know, I can lift, you know, 400 pounds, whatever, deadlift, 400 pounds, that's a lot of weight. And then I ask you, hey, your turn, lift 400 pounds. Do you think that you would be like, look, I'm not talented enough to lift 400 pounds? Or would you think, no, I don't have enough training. You are clearly, you know, been working out for a while, so <laughs> you can lift that weight, right? You would think, no, it's a skill-based thing. Uh, Anthony has obviously trained himself in weight training, so clearly he's an excellent weight lifter. But for whatever reason, when it comes to art or any other creative adventure, people don't think this way. They think... They, they take it way too personal. Like, I personally just suck. Or I personally am not a good artist. Or I don't have the skills. Where when we think about, you know, any kind of other exercise, like running, like, how do you finish a marathon? You just finish it by finishing it. Maybe it takes you a whole day, but that's all you got to do. You got to run, walk, crawl those uh, 26 miles. And again, people just don't think of art this way. And when I talk to people and mentor people, uh, most of my job is not to teach them how to do art, is to convince them to stop being so hard on themselves. To stop having this perspective of like, I don't have talent. And right now you can see that I already got a pretty, uh, you know, decent drawing uh, that I've done in this, you know, short amount of time. and. You might think, well, that's crazy. Like, you clearly have some sort of talent. No, I actually trained to paint quickly. I would have a, a stopwatch and I would literally time myself, like as if I was doing laps. And that's something that, you know, you would never think. He's like, no, art is one of those things you just need is all the time in the world. Like, you need it. You got to wait for a butterfly to land on your lap and then you can be motivated and inspired. And you can see right here that I have a uh, timer. I literally time myself and I would do like one hour intervals. I would do 30 minute intervals of painting. And what I would do is, okay, 
you know, how much of my painting is a success? Uh, how much was it a real like hassle? And then I'll just rinse and repeat and pay attention to what I was really suffering in and improving. I found that my anatomy was really like lacking. So I focused a lot of my time on learning human anatomy. I realized my forms weren't, you know, clear. So I worked on a lot of forms. So I did a lot of still paintings, you know, and I learned what I should learn by doing these timed exercises because I didn't look at art as a talent. I looked at it as a skill, you know? And as soon as you start to do the same, you start to become less hard on yourself. You're just like, oh, of course I am not good at this art stuff because I haven't really dove, like, dove in to the very specifics, the very nuances on what it takes to become a great artist. For me, I've done this for so many years. Like I said, 2000, uh, 2007. So about, you know, nearly 13 years of just hardcore how to paint really good digitally. And there's other things that would get in the way that I had to practice, which was the tools. Now, Photoshop is actually not built to be a paintings tool. In fact, Adobe has just released Fresco, which is more for painting. But I've been using Photoshop and learned the ins and outs of Photoshop for so long that I feel like Photoshop is just a powerful tool for painting because of the photo manipulating aspects of it. Uh, and what I've done is master my tool to the point where if you guys are watching the screen right now, you can see that I literally switched my brush to color dodge just using hotkeys. And you might be like, wait, what? You can hotkey color dodge on your brush? And the answer to that is, oh no, it's already default. You just didn't know because you didn't research, you didn't study, you didn't practice. And once you realize, oh wait, it, all Anthony is getting at is the reason why I'm not accelerating in my creative adventures is that I'm giving up too soon. I'm not really diving deeper and deeper and deeper. Then this whole fantasy of talent starts to evaporate and you stop saying stuff like, well, I can't draw a face. You start saying, oh, a face is really hard to draw. I need to study a human face, or uh, I want to make sure that my tools work better for me. So what is already available within my tool that I can use, or uh, what can I do within my tool, like basically hotkeys or settings to make it even easier for me to use if it wasn't already there by default. And all of a sudden the world becomes, you know, your oyster, you just can just do whatever you want. It's like this whole adventure of getting super, super good. Uh, that feels like kind of like a video game too, because you start to kind of quantify your creative growth more and more. And another thing that you might notice is that I'm like talking while painting, which is very challenging for many people. And this is one thing that I know a lot of other instructors that I deal with and talk with on a peer to peer level. They're always like curious, like how the heck do you like talk and draw? Same thing. I, t I have been teaching since seven years ago. And so I literally just talk and paint in front of my students often. And at first it was very hard. At first I would, I would like paint and just stay silent for a long time and then say something and then paint. And then over time, because I was doing it for so long, now it's just second nature. Now I'm like, it's like walking for me because many of you guys I'm sure can walk and talk, right? For me, I can paint and talk. I love to bring this up because I have made this a skill that I am really, really good at that I don't necessarily have to think about it as much. In fact, what's usually on the front of my mind is whatever I have to design for the client, or in this case, you know, a demonstration for people who are attending this event, you know? And I can just focus on the topics at hand, just like as if you were walking and talking with your friend, talking about the weather, talking about, you know, how crazy times are. <laughs> In, these, in this current state. When you start to really, really, really appreciate what I'm getting at and you stop putting all of your, you know, talent points into having to be motivated, uh, having to be this person who is a talented individual that was brought down by the heavens, you know, then you can really focus on what matters, which is skill-based training. All right. But let, let me uh, show you guys using a diagram. This is kind of where people usually start. They start with 
you know, I suck at art. Okay. And then after that, they say, you know what I need to do? I need to practice. Because most people know that you should practice, right? I'm not saying anything new to you guys. I think most people understand this. They're not confused by, hey, you know, I'm not good. I got to practice. But what ends up happening next is, you know, they come to realize that it's a challenge or that it's very hard. And because it's hard, because it's a challenge, they immediately have a couple things happen. Either they'll start to have insecurities about their abilities. They start to say, why isn't this coming to me easily? Or I don't understand what I'm doing. There's so many things that can happen here. And all of them are reasonable and all of them are rational thoughts. And I am actually not, you know, judging you for having these kinds of perspectives. I'm actually encouraging you to understand that this is actually normal. But what ends up happening is these get the best of you. And what ends up happening from there is you quit, you stop, or you do something else. You get distracted. You go uh, outside. You're like, you know, I haven't gone on a walk today. I'm going to go for a walk or I'm going to go play some video games. I'm going to do some sports, whatever your leisure activity it is. Sometimes it's just going on social media and getting lost for hours, right? You're going to do something that doesn't hurt you, like, you know, on an emotional level and makes you feel good. But what ends up happening is that you still suck, okay? The circle has not been broken. And so obviously what I'm trying to propose here is what I like to call the spiral of excellence, meaning that you are going to do something that makes more of a spiral pattern versus a circular pattern, meaning that you realize that this is hard. So instead of quitting, guess what? You practice some more. After that you've practiced, you come to realize you still kind of suck, okay? But you are a little bit better than you were before, as you can see. If you look at this, this gap and we were to take the center point that I've drawn here as the further you away you are from this, which let's actually make it a zero from zero skill, the further away, you know, the better you get. And this becomes a spiral where you got to practice, you find out it's a challenge, and instead of quitting, you practice some more, and, you know, you still probably suck, but you suck less. And if you keep this pattern up, as you can imagine, eventually the spiral will get to a point where, hey, I don't really suck that much anymore. I'm actually pretty good. And if you keep this up, it's actually exponential. The spiral gets wider and wider and wider. Okay. So let me explain it to you in a different context. Okay, so most of you guys have bills, right? So if you were to think about your, you know, life and having to pay bills, if you don't pay bills, what ends up, what ends up happening, right? You get, you know, evicted, you get uh, your electricity turned off, your phone gets cut off, whatever the heck it is that you forgot to pay bills. We've all been there. We've all experienced this. And it's not great. So what do you got to do? You got to make a living and you got to pay those bills. What I like to think of is that there is such a thing called art bills, basically uh, something that you have to pay in terms of art, right? And with bills, just like, uh, you know, any other way of thinking about this, you will have debt, meaning that if you don't pay your bills, you will acquire debt. Now, Obviously, with bills, if you pay them off, you're fine. And obviously, with debt, if you don't pay them off, you're going to be asked to pay them eventually. And it's still through a monetary value. But here's the thing. How do you pay off art debt? Let's say you go two to three years of really not investing in yourself, into your personal projects, into your personal growth as an artist. You don't do that one hour to half an hour a day suggestion that Anthony Jones said you should do. Just draw for a half an hour to an hour. That's all. Pay off your art bills, right? Let's say that you, you know, collected art debt for years. How do you pay that off? Well, you pay it off with the worst stuff possible. You pay it off with depression, anxiety, regret, remorse. These types of things, these types of emotions is how you pay off art debt. Man, why didn't I put more time into my art? Oh man, I still don't have the job in the career I want to go. Oh dude, like all of my artwork, I just hate it. You start to have these feelings, those anxieties that I mentioned, and that's a really terrible place to be. And many of us have experienced this and I sympathize with this. So that's why I like to think of it as paying off your art bills, 
Because if you do that one hour to two hour a day, maybe, maybe you do two to four hours a day, regardless of how you feel. You can do one hour in the morning, one hour before you go to bed. Just have a sketchbook next to you at all times. At least you're investing into something that is going to help you grow. Now, what ends up happening if you pay off your art bills for a long period of time, you start to do what, or you start to get what I have gotten. You start to build a reputation for becoming a good artist. You start to have pride in your artwork. You start to get jobs. You start to advance in your career. And ultimately, you learn what I've learned, that talent is earned. You know, you're not born with it. You earn it. And when you start to pay your art bills, you will find such fulfillment that you never thought you could fulfill. And you'll start feeling more and more confident about just practicing. Because you know it's hard. That's part of the deal. And whenever I talk about this with a lot of my students, like I said, most of my time is to comfort my artistic students to not be so hard on themselves. Because when they are, they indirectly create more art debt because they don't put the time in, because they don't like it. They don't want to invest that time. And so I'm going to go back into my painting here. My philosophy on, you know, getting good at art is really just don't put all of your time and effort to try to stay motivated, you know? Be sure to focus all of your time and attention on being patient, being kind to yourself, right? But I think that whenever we watch these popular media and we watch stuff like on social media, like Instagram, and we see all these beautiful people with great lives and it looks like everybody is doing things effortlessly. If you really think about it, that's just not true. Most of these people are just not sharing the hard parts of their life, right? Most of these people are not sharing the troubles, the struggles, you know? They're just showing, hey, this is where I'm at now. Look at how awesome things are now. But how do they get there? You know, how did they accelerate? And I will tell you, in my whole career, I have met thousands and thousands of great artists. I have never met any like highly skilled individual that just told me, you know, one day I woke up, I just started drawing, and now I am, you know, the art director for this big project. Or now I am the cinematic director or the uh, lead concept artist for these big projects or these awesome games or movies. And I will tell you uh, two stories. One of a person who had what I believe the least resistance or one who I believe had the most resistance. And I'll leave you guys with these two stories. A young kid went to college. He spent his young age of 16 to 18 just doing nothing but art. And when he went to college, he realized he had to up his game. He got an internship at a really reputable studio. He was not good enough still. So he spent another year of just hardcore work. And the next year of that internship, so by the time he was like 19, he actually got that job. So he spent, you know, at least three to four years of his life training to become really good. And that was a great story because he really got to a good position at a very short amount of time. But it wasn't easy. He had to really be diligent. And the hardest and the most resistant story that I've ever heard uh, is one of my favorites. And there is this guy that I met at an event and he told me that he used to be homeless, he lived on the streets, and he used to do street art. And one day, somebody saw his street art and said, hey, this is pretty good. Can we give you an opportunity to work for us at our studio? Uh, can you do a test for us? And he said, yeah, absolutely, just come back in a week. And he spent that whole week working on this art test for this guy. The guy came back, saw the work, and he's like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Like, you're you're perfect. Uh, when can you get started? And the guy said, I guess we start right away. And the first day of his work, he went straight to the producers and said, hey, is it okay if I get my first month's pay? And the producers were like, why? Why should we give you money of any kind? And he said, because I don't have a home and I want to make sure I can get like in a hotel room so I can take a shower and not come into work stinky, you know? And when they found this out, they're like, wait, you're homeless? Uh, and they obviously helped them out. And now this person is uh, an art director to one of the biggest game studios in the world. And he spent a lot of his youth drawing and doing art 
And that was the only way he could make money. So that's all he did for years and years and years. And he was very, very fortunate that somebody gave him a chance to escape the life that he had. But he was not talented. He worked for it. He earned it. And for those of you guys who are doubting your own abilities, you're doubting your own skills, and you really feel that, you know, you're missing something, I can promise you, just take the time, take the effort, and you'll be surprised uh, how quickly you'll get good. It might not take like several years like you think it will, or a uh, lifetime. It might take maybe a year, and you'll start to feel good about your artwork. You'll start feeling good about your creative and personal work. So remember, remember what I'm trying to tell you guys. You know, talent is earned. It's not given. So thank you guys for listening to my talk. Hope you guys were inspired and motivated. But like I said, stay more patient and be more resilient. And if you guys ever want to get a hold of me, you guys can find me on Robot Pencil. And I respond pretty quickly if you go to my Instagram. It's not a big deal. So cheers. Cheers.